Thank you very much, Natalie, and a very good afternoon to you, wherever and however, however you've got TalkSport on. What a fiesta of colour we've got here inside the Stuttgart Arena to my left. The red, yellow and black flags have been flown by the German fans to my right. The red, white and green flags of Hungary in the Unterturkheimer curve. Fantastic colour. We're about to have the national anthem, so we will start with the national anthem of the Hungarians. Terrific noise inside the Stuttgart arena. The pre-match pleasantry is almost done. And our second commentary of the day, live from Germany, here at the Stuttgart Arena, about to get underway on TalkSport after that dramatic 2-2 draw between Croatia and Albania. So any doubts German fans had about the Mannschaft going into these championships as hosts? Well, they appear to have been swept away by that record-breaking win over Scotland on opening night. A win here tonight at the home of this season's Bundesliga runners-up. Would see the Germans pretty much through already. But opponents Hungary will not be in charitable mood, having slipped to a 3-1 defeat to Switzerland in their opener. The Magyars had only lost one of 16 internationals prior to the Euros, and they are unbeaten in three against their opponents tonight. But they do need to start better than they did last time out in Cologne. Julian Nagelsmann had a good blend of youth and experience in his Germany starting 11 against the Scots. He sees no reason to change it, so he has not. Manuel Neuer equals Gianluigi Buffon's Euros appearance record tonight with his 17th appearance at these championships. He's in goal, in front of him a back four of Josh Kimmich, Antonio Rudiger, Jonathan Tarr and Maximilian Mittelstedt. Robert Andrish and Tony Cruz are the holding midfielders. Jamal Musiala, Ilkay Gundogan and Florian Wirtz are the three in behind Kai Havertz up front. And a full complement of players on the bench. Marco Rossi will have at least been encouraged by Hungary's second half performance against the Swiss, if not the first. He makes two changes tonight. Out of the side go Lang and Shalai, in come Bola and Dardai. It's still a 3-4-3 formation, but a bit of a switcheroo. We'll see Bola go to right wing back and Fiola, who played in that position, switch to centre half. So it's Petr Galacci in goal. The back three is Attila Fiola, Willy Orban and Martin Dardai. Then Bendigus, Bola, Adam Nash, once of Bristol City, Andras Schaefer and Bormas Milos Kerkers in midfield. Dominic Sobozhaev, Liverpool and Roland Schalai in behind Barnabas Varga in attack for the Hungarians. Germany in their chain strip of shirts that grade from pink into dark blue. And they'll be getting underway kicking from left to right as we look towards the Unter Turkheimer curve away to our right which is where the Hungarian fans are hungry for their part in all white with bits of green and red trim Havertz and Gundogan the German captain standing together on the halfway line and we await the countdown to kick off on the big screen either side of us in this arena that holds 51,000 they put seats in in the Kanstatter curve away to our left which is normally all standing for Stuttgart supporters and with the countdown done we are underway in Stuttgart on Talk Sport as the hosts look to make it two from two but Hungary have a decent recent record against Die Mannschaft ball in the area Kimmich loses out and it drops at the edge of the area and it might break on the left hand side for Kerkes but panic in the German defences Josh Kimmich under hit a back pass to Neuer and it was very nearly Roland Schalai who slid in to knock it past the keeper but they got away with it Germany Darren Bent yeah they did and that was Germany trying to be too clever from kickoff. I think Gundogan and Jamal Musiala they tried to do something they got caught so Bozlai he read the situation and they were on the German back four and to be fair if it wasn't for the pass that maybe was a little bit over hit he would have had a clear chance to go but Manuel Neuer doing what he's done spectacularly well throughout his career coming off shutting out the space and the opportunity's gone Havertz drifting down the right hand side as Germany come forward for the first time this evening gets to the right hand corner of the box and then drifts away from the penalty area towards the middle of the half back it goes to Jonathan Tarr Bundesliga winner with Bayer Leverkusen this season what a year he's had really had to wait his chance to build up his caps ratio winning his 27th cap tonight for Germany Rudiger knocks it back to Tarr on halfway everything ahead of him everybody behind the ball for Hungary 
including Varga. It's picked up on the left-hand side by Florian Wirtz. Now back to halfway, and Maximilian Mittelstedt. The ball across to Rudiger, just inside the hungry half now. Being very patient, Germany, in these opening stages. Gundogan drifts into the inside right channel, receives the pass and then just lays it off to Rudiger. Gundogan has it again. And Lex to go just slightly further back to Jamal Musiala, former England under-21, but now winning his 32nd cap for Germany. Tar again finds Gundogan, again inside right position, midway point of the Hungarian half, comes into the centre of the half now, once again lays it off to Tar. And then Tony Crows turns it round the corner to Mittelstedt. And Hungary forcing Germany back into their own half, Darren Bent. Nil-nil. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be patient, Germany. I mean, Hungary set on that 4-3-4-3 four, th three, four, three formation. Ball into the edge of the area. Havertz tries to turn away from his opponent, but Adam Nagy is there on the scene to win the ball back. And then Attila Fiola drifts out to the right-hand side, hits it against the German player and gets himself a throw-in. Two and a half got on talk sport. It's nil-nil. Yeah, the, I think Hungary get with the 4-3. Three, three formation the 3-4-3 three, three formation I think when in possession I think that will be their formation but out of possession it's almost like a back five just causing Germany problems blocking the pockets not letting anyone run between them no space between the lines but I fully expect Germany in that 4-2-3-1 formation to be able to at some point break that down but they're going to have to be patient I don't know whether our stats guy is trolling us but he's just sent a message through James with our in-house stat service Germany have already, most four, already faced more shots on target than they did against Scotland yeah, he's definitely trolling. <laughs> definitely trolling. Scotland, Switzerland later in Cologne, live on Talk Sports straight after this game. But here come Hungary again, down the left-hand side. It was an attempt to send the ball into the area from Andras Schaefer. But Germany coming away with the ball over the halfway. Musiala tucks it in field, looking for Havertz, but it goes behind Havertz. And a clearance down the field by Fiola will bounce once and through to Neuer. Nil-nil, three gone. Yeah, a little bit lacklustre there from Jamal Musiala because it was Joshua Kimmich who wins the ball back and he rolls a nice intelligent ball down the line to Musiala and he tries to feed Kai Havertz to bounce it off him but it's a really lacklustre pass and he passes it behind him and the opportunity is gone. But if, if Germany want to break down this Hungarian back line, they're going to have to play quickly. Here is Shalai in the centre circle for Hungary. But plenty of German shirts around him and Musiala is one of those that takes the ball off him. Germany have it back. Hungary won the last time they were in Germany. A 1 0 win in the Nations League a couple of years ago. Here's Havertz into the right hand corner of the area for Germany. Gets the ball onto his left foot. The shot is on target but very weak and a comfortable save for Petr Galacci. 0 0. Really good movement there from Kai Havertz. He looked at Joshua Kimmich. They caught eye contact on this right hand side. He went to go short and just spun him behind the fullback. And the fullback had no pace to kind of keep up with him. And he'd done well. I like seeing Kai Havertz do that. He faced up the defender. He took it one extra touch inside and hit the shot and just didn't get enough on it. But it was a really good opportunity. Good movement. Galacci about to smack the ball downfield. The accepted number one had a serious ACL injury a couple of years ago, which meant he missed all the qualifiers. Petr Galacci, but Marco Rossi sees him as the number one goalkeeper. He takes the goal kick downfield. It comes off the head of a German midfielder. It was Andrix that uh, flicks it out of play. He's one of two German players on a yellow card, along with Jonathan Tarr. Bendigus Boller came on as a sub against the Swiss and he picked up the only yellow that Hungary have got so far from those out in the starting lineup. Throw coming in from the left-hand side from Martin Dardai looking for Barnabas Varga and he's won a corner. He forced Andrich to turn it behind so Hungary have a corner away to our left. It's nil-nil on talk sport. Yeah, really good play there from Varga. He jumped up. He knew he couldn't win the ball but he just put enough pressure on Tony Rudiger to be able to... He couldn't get a clear header on it and he ends up heading it out for a corner but good play from Varga and he's going to have to do that. At times the service into him might not be great. He's going to have to use his physicality, his body, try and butt back into the centre half, just make it uncomfortable for him. Dominic Sovislav of Liverpool will have the corner and the three giant centre-halves for Hungary have all stationed themselves beyond the back post. And Sovislav prepares to deliver. Right-footed in swing, clips it into the near post. It's cleared away and it's picked up by Shalai. Lays it off to Sovislav, teases it back into the box. Might drift to the right-hand side of the box to be driven towards goal and just over the bar. The shot came in from Bola and a vital touch from Andrik turned it behind for another corner to Hungary. Nil-nil. Yeah, good play again to Bosley. The first pass wasn't the, the best cross, but the second one he put it into a really good area. And I thought Germany dealt with it quite well, but it bounced to the back stick and it was a clear shot on goal, but it was good defending there. Put 
his body on the line from Antrick with their old fashioned defending with his arms behind his back not to give a penalty away and manages to get something on it and it goes out for a corner hasn't scored the Hungary Bendigoos Voller but he forced a corner there and that was on target Sobos Light to take it from the right hand side so an out swinger to come now from the Hungarian number 10 into the near post headed out by Tart nobody up on halfway for Germany so Hungary can retrieve possession and send the ball back to their keeper Galacius midway inside his own half looks up he can go right or left here and elects to go diagonally out to the left hand side looking for Varga tries to help it down the inside left channel but Salai couldn't get there Rudiger comfortably there first and it's headed back towards Rudiger and just guide it down for Manuel Neuer so 17 appearances now at European Championships for Manuel Neuer equaling the great Gianluigi Buffon of Italy and the ball's back on halfway with Tony Crows who was exemplary against Scotland having come out of retirement for these championships Musiala tries to feed the ball up to Havertz at the edge of the area but it's get away by Hungary and then two players go to ground one of them was Shalai the other was Kroos in fact it wasn't Kroos it was Kimmich but the referee Danny McKayley from, Hung uh, from Holland said no foul on either player Hungary win it back Nage Tases out to the right hand side and Bola then it's a little cushion headed down from Varga but Naj couldn't pick up the loose ball and instead Germany have it back seven gone on talk sport here in Stuttgart it's nil nil between Germany and Hungary Darren Bent really open and entertaining game I mean that pass there from Tony Cruz I mean it's the eye contact where he's looking somewhere else and he just sees Jamal Musiala pull off the centre half and he wraps the pass into him and then it's can he pick the right pass and for me he didn't Ilkay Gundogan was the pass if he rolls him in he threw on goal but he chose another option and ended up giving it away Gundogan leaves it for Andrik midway point of the Hungarian half now Crows in the centre of that half shovels the ball out to Josh Kimmich on this near side the German right has to go back in field to Rudiger because again Hungary have got their all their players back behind the ball trying to plug the gaps Kimmich again right wing gives the ball in field to Musiala there's a foot in that gets the ball half clear by Dardai but it's back out to Kimmich on the right wing plays a 1-2 with Musiala and comes in field Josh Kimmich now Crows gets his head up, delivers the ball beyond Gundogan with a cross from the right-hand side. And Hungary will just let that drift over the dead ball line for a goal kick. We played nine minutes on Talk Sport. It is Hungary nil, Germany nil. Earlier today in Hamburg, Croatia 2, Albania 2. A dramatic stoppage time equaliser for the Albanians. Keeps their hopes alive in the tournament. They both lost their openers, don't forget. Scotland, Switzerland follows this commentary live in Cologne with Joe Shannon and Chris Uelimo giving you commentary on that game and then tomorrow England Denmark at this time tomorrow in Leipzig with Adrian Jim and Stu and we've got all the build up for that game from Box Park Wembley tomorrow from one Hawksby and Baker are there with the likes of Ledley King and Steve Bruce joining them ahead of our coverage from inside the stadium in Leipzig nil nil here Hungary in possession just inside their own half the ball is with Willie Orban, one of their three centre-halves. Pass short to Adam Naj, who I saw play many times in his couple of years at Bristol City. And I think the Hungarian public are quite staggered that he's never found a home in an elite club, a top-flight club. He's playing for Spezia in Italy at the moment. Out on the right-hand side. It break, might break for Hungary here. Shalai's made a run to the far post. It's with Varga. Comes in field towards the edge of the area, but in steps Andrés, who's a really good defensive midfield shield for Germany. And he sends the ball downfield, headed out for a throw. Germany nil, Hungary nil. I like what Hungary done there, though. They were patient, they kept the ball, they kept the ball. They've understood that Germany have had loads of the possession, certainly in this early part of the game, the first 10 minutes. They've got the ball down, had a few touches, passed the ball nicely, and then when Germany just showed a little bit of a press, that's when they went forward. It was really good to play, and I think if Hungary want to get anything out of this, that's exactly what they're going to have to do. Havertz again, the target for a ball downfield, and he's got in front of his defender and sends it across the face of goal, and Boller has to hand it behind for a corner. Suddenly, Havertz 
Hertz got in behind Martin Dardai, who looked like he had the situation under control, running towards his own goalkeeper. In fact, it was Orban that made the mistake. Havertz used his strength, just couldn't get the finish he wanted. Good save by the goalkeeper, Galacci. Corner to Germany, 0-0. Yeah, great, great ball. Great persistence from Kai Havertz as well, using strength against Orban. And it was a good strike, but it was a great save from the goalkeeper from Galacci. Really, really good save. And again, I think Verts was coming in behind to try and put the rebound in, and they dealt with the situation really well. Crows with the left wing corner for Germany, their first of the game, a right footed in swing to come from him, a pack six shot, but he drills it to the far post, falling back across the face of goal by Andres and headed behind by Boller for another corner, that was on target from Robert Andrich, but behind it goes for a corner. Super routine from Kroos and Andrews there, the two midfielders. You know, I think that's a goal. I think if, it, if, it's defend, if they don't defend it and they don't clear it, I think that goes in. I think it beats the goalkeeper. I think Bola gets his head on it and stops Andrews from scoring. But what a bit of technique. First of all, the pass from Tony Cruz and then the volley from Andrews. Absolutely superb. Kroos has come across to the, this near side, the right for Germany in front of the Hungarian fans to take this next corner for Germany out swinger to the edge of the area just gets away from Havertz and Shalai can just lob it downfield bit of a misplaced miscued pass from Mittelstedt but it'll just dribble into his own half nobody there for Hungary so Neuer can hold on to possession just for the time being do you know what that and that's another that's the only thing when you play a three at the back you're encouraging your centre forward say Kai Havertz in this instance to just keep running down the outside of Fiola and Dardai every single time someone gets the ball up because you're playing a three and you've got your wing backs are so high that's where the space is so you see Kai Havertz he doesn't have to do anything particularly clever just bends his run into that channel stay on side and he'll get opportunities every single time Cross for Germany at 0-0 on talk sport rolls it out to the right hand side and Wirtz Wirtz to the right hand corner of the penalty area tries one challenge too many and he's fouled Shalai so that's a free kick to Hungary just inside their own half Germany the biggest home nation winning the Euros opener when they beat Scotland by five goals to one we'll see how Scotland respond later live on talk sport as they take on the Swiss who in turn beat Hungary by three goals to one although that was 2-1 until the very latter stages and then Brian Bolo scored a late goal when Hungary were pushing forward desperate for an equaliser and they have a free kick the Hungarians just ahead of their own penalty area that Galaciu made that terrific save with his right fist from Kai Havertz just a moment ago to smack downfield what have you spotted Darren Ben? and I'm just looking at the Tony Rudiger against Varga it's almost like he said right to Andrich you challenge I'm not quite sure Anto Antonio Rudiger he loves the physical challenge but it looked like to me there he was saying to Andrich just drop five yards you challenge and I'll drop off because to be fair Varga's used his body he's one headers he's got the flick ons and I think he's causing them one or two problems so I think he's just gone do you know what just give me a hand and I'll drop off and pick up the second ball Former England striker Darren Bent, part of our commentary team here in Stuttgart on Talk Sport, where we're approaching the quarter hour mark. No goals between Germany and Hungary. Misplaced pass by Kimmich. That's a collector's item. The weight goes out to the right hand side. Hungary trying to send Bendigus Bola away in the right wing. He gets the cross in. Where's that going to drop? Into the D. Picked up by Shalai. Gets the shot away and it's blocked by Kimmich. It was on target, but I think Neuer would have dealt with it, Darren Bent. 0 0. Yeah, Shalai didn't really get enough on it. I mean, it was a great pullback. First of all, Dominic, uh, Dominic Soboslai rolling it down the line. It was a cutback into a really good area. His first touch was perfect out of his feet. But for whatever reason, he doesn't get enough contact on it. Maybe he got excited and he drags it. And as you said, there, it gets blocked in the end. But I think even if he hadn't got blocked, I think Neuer would have, would have jumped on it. Ilkay Gundogan for Germany, quarter of an hour gone, nil-nil, on talk sport, lays it back to Tarr at the edge of the centre circle, Rudiger just to his right, sends a diagonal ball into the box, over the head of Havertz, Mittelstedt is giving chase on the far side, and that forces Boller to slide it out of play for a German throw, ten yards from the corner flag, left-hand side, taken quickly by Mittelstedt, Musiala takes over now, goes in field to Gundogan, who just swivelled and passed up to the edge of the area, blind, and it was easily intercepted by Fiola, and Hungary have it back. Ball into centre of midfield. Good touch from Salai to knock it down for Bournemouth. Milos Kerkes playing in the left wing back role. Not really seen much of the ball, Kerkes, no. in this open quarter of an hour. But you know what he's having to do? As I said, they're three at the back, but he's having to do that kind of left back role and dropping into a four because, as I said, Kai Havertz on this right hand side with Kimmich, he just rolled it down the outside every single time. And it's like the centre half saying to him, if it's Dardai saying to him, you have to get back in here because I can't cover that space as well. So Kerkes, who we know can go forward, can create problems. He's having to play left back. 
Hungary have scored in 16 of their last 17 matches, whether competitive or friendly, drew 0-0 with Montenegro a year ago. And for their part, Germany, they've conceded in each of their last 13 matches at major championships. But it's 0-0 so far, 16 minutes gone. Wurz for Germany. Out to the left-hand corner of the box from Musiala. We're going to take on Fiola. Hits the cross against the Hungarian number five, and that's another corner to Germany, away to our right, 0-0. Yeah, the two wide players combining really well then, Wurz and Musiala. And Musiala's been kind of been on the fringe of the game so far. I mean, we saw him against Scotland. Everything that they did, did, did do well going forward, he was at the heart of it. But his first 15 minutes, he's kind of been quiet, been on the periphery a little bit. But I expect him, as the game goes on, to have more and more of an impact. Crows with the corner in front of the Hungarian fans. Now, the last time he really drilled the ball deep to the far post, closest to us. Kimish is waiting there. And this one may go into the six-yard box. Indeed, it does. Heads go up and Bola got it headed up in the air. Lands around the penalty spot and it's headed away. And there's a break on for Hungary if they play the ball right. Salai striding out to the right wing position. Germany flooding players back behind the ball. And so Salai just holds play up and knocks it back into his own half. Didn't fancy himself there, it seems. Fair play. Don't cross the ball in for the box for no reason. There's no one in there. He just holds the ball up, waits for his teammates to get back up and then just goes back. And that's why I've been really impressed with Hungary. They haven't tried to throw balls forward and try and win the game in this first half. They've kept patient. They've kept possession on the ball. And they're just waiting for a little opening because every now and then Germany will go on the press but they go in their ones and twos. They don't all go together. And then there's space behind Andrich and Kroos. Marco Rossi, the coach that's revitalised Hungarian national football after he won the title with Honved. He was given the national job in 2018. He's now a Hungarian citizen, having been brought up in Italian. Marco Rossi, 23 years senior to his opposite number, Julian Nagelsmann, who's prowling his technical area just down beneath us as Tar picks up possession for Germany. 18 minutes gone on Talk Sport. 0 0 in this game between Germany and Hungary. He's not happy, Julian Nagelsmann, he's not happy at all. I mean, he's out of his technical area, he's screaming at the players because I think he wants them to move it quick enough. And as we spoke about this now, Dance, he's saying to Kai Havertz, run into that channel. And I don't understand why they're not doing it more. Because every single time Kai Havertz has run down there, he's either got a corner, he had an opportunity five minutes ago, but they've stopped doing it. Well, here's Musiala charging towards the area now. Finds Havertz, turns it round the corner, looking for Gundogan, who just couldn't control it. Might have been a hint of offside against the German captain anyway. But suddenly Musiala pairing through the inside right channel, clips it into the area, and Havertz unselfishly tries to lay it on for his captain, who would have been onside, but he just couldn't collect it, and it dribbled behind for a Hungarian goal kick, nil-nil. Yes, yeah, really good play for Musiala, just drops it into Kai Havertz, and he tries to leave it in an area where Gundogan, we've seen him do it so many times from Manchester City and Barcelona, but Kai Havertz layoff is just a fraction too heavy, and the chance is gone, but that's what they need to do, in and around the box, one and two touch, play really, really quickly. Nil-nil here, you're listening to Euro Game Day live on TalkSport, presented by Carling, the UK's number one lager, 18 plus, please drink responsibly. And as I mentioned that, let's not forget, Talk Sport Breakfast, Adam Brazil, Gabby and Don Lahore, tomorrow morning, Stuart Pearce will join him for an hour as well, to look ahead to England, and David Bumble Lloyd, legend of English cricket, and a big Accrington Stanley fan will join him, and... Ali McCoyce will join the boys to look back on whatever happens tonight between Scotland and Switzerland that you can hear live here on TalkSport straight after this commentary. That's TalkSport Breakfast from 6am in the morning. And David Moyes joins White and Jordan as well from 10 to pick the bones out of whatever happens in Cologne tonight. Nil-nil here at the moment. We're approaching the 20-minute mark. Germany have the ball. We've seen this a lot, Darren Benton, this mm -hmm. opening 20 minutes as we've been watching. Germany having the ball around the halfway line and Hungary, uh, Hungary rather putting everybody behind the ball. They are, but that's Germany not playing quick enough. I mean, when Tony Cruz gets it, he's looking up and no one's really making an angle. But as I said, the movement's been good. Kirkis does not want to play left back. But at the minute, he's having to because they're spinning down that channel every single time. But it's just a bit too intricate. Gundogan clips the ball into the area, right-hand side. There was pressure for a moment, but Kirkis back on his own dead ball line. Can volley it clear? And it's collected with a minimum of votes by Antonio Rudiger. 
and sent down the inside right channel for Florian Wirtz. Trying to slide it down the right side of the box for Havertz, but you heard the groan of the German fans around us in the stadium as Havertz slid in to no avail. Another goal kick to Hungary, nil-nil. That's the right pass though. That's exactly what he should have done. He just done it a fraction too late for Edwin Wirtz. He, he picked up the ball uh, in that right-hand side in a really good space for him, Wirtz. And Havertz is pointing, put me the ball, give me the ball in there. He took an extra touch and by the time he went to pass it, it, it wasn't on anymore. But that's the type of area that can hurt this Hungary back line. Well, already the notebook's out and Julian Nagelsmann's having a long chat sat down in his technical area with his coaching staff about what his team are doing right. I think it's more about, as Darren Bent's already intimated, what they're doing wrong so far. But it's nil-nil on Talk Sport. 21 minutes gone. Throws for Germany inside his own half. Lays it off to Tar. Up to halfway, Musiala, who gives it back to the Bayer Leverkusen centre-half. Rudiger wants of Chelsea. Plays the ball into the feet of Florian Wirtz, who turns and finds Kimmich. Early ball up to Havertz, but good defending from Hungary. Salai nods it infield, but it's come back Germany's way. Wirtz again swings the ball across the edge of the area, at the edge of the D. It's played through by Musiala, trying to get Gundogan away, and he's won it back as Hungary lose possession. Surely Musiala, he scored! Terrible mess at the back by Hungary, who couldn't get it clear. Centre-halves and goalkeepers falling over themselves to try and clear the ball, which they couldn't. Gundogan still had the presence of mind to know which teammates were around. He finds Musiala, he finds the back of the net, and Germany take the lead midway through the first half. Germany won, hungry nil. First of all, a really good finish from, from um, Jamal Musiala, the composure, but Hungary have got themselves to blame. So many opportunities they had to cross it. Musiala gets the ball near the edge of the box. He plays in, he plays in Gundogan. Gundogan somehow, I think maybe it's a foul, but it's not. He, he's persistent. He manages to bully Will Orban. And if they clear it, it's opportunity gone. He doesn't. He keeps going. Doesn't do a lot wrong, actually, looking at it again. But then he had the composure. He finds Musiala, and there's still a lot of traffic between him and the goal. He just lifts it a fraction, and it comes off the defender off the underside of the bar in it's a really really good finish however there is a goal check VAR is taking a look for a potential foul by Ilkay Gundogan leading up to that goal and the German fans have just seen that coming up on the screen Stuart Atwell is part of the VAR team today he's the assistant VAR in amongst all the Dutch guys who are looking into this and they're still waiting for a decision check over and the goal is given and it is 1-0 to Germany no foul by Gundogan in the build-up and so Jamal Musiala gets his fourth international goal and Germany have started as they mean to go on in these championships down goes Kirkes as Hungary try and respond and they want a free kick down the inside left channel there was a Hungary player booked by Danny McKayley, the referee, as the players move back to the halfway line. A yellow card for descent. We'll find out who that was for. But meantime, Darren Bent, Hungary have won a free kick here. 1-0 Germany. Really good play from Kirkers. It's like they gave him the ball and he said, you know what, I'm sick and tired of playing left back. And he just drove direct. He tried to play a little 1-2 with Varga and Antonio Rudiger. I mean, a little bit dirty to be fair. Gets it, he body checks him. And it's, it's quite, a bad, not, and quite a nasty foul. I wouldn't say it's an awful foul, but it's a bit of a nasty foul. And... It's a foul at the end of the day. He goes through, and it's a, a really good shooting opportunity now for Hungary. We haven't really had the chance, other than that first minute, I haven't really had the chance to kind of test Manuel Neuer in the goal. It was Barnabas Varga that got the yellow card for descent from the referee. And now the PA announcer can confidently say who scored the goal. Now the VAR's had a look and pronounced everything okie dokie. Jamal Musiala. Midway through the first half. So let's see what Hungary can conjure up from this free kick. And this is where Dominic Sommerslide will fancy his chances, Darren Bent. Yeah, he's got great technique. We certainly saw it at the, the, the early part of last season for Liverpool before he got the injury. He was hitting some goals from, from a fair distance. Good technique, good quality. And this is a chance for him. Rudiger and Kirkes having to wait to come back on because they were both treated on the pitch after that foul on Kirkes. So it's 10 against 10 for the moment. And a free kick for Dominic Soberslight, 25 yards out, a little way to the left of centre. There's a three-man German wall just inside the 18-yard box. And Soberslight taking three steps back from the ball. Up he comes, right-footed, over the wall, brilliant save by Neuer, turned across the face of goal and he's managed to keep it out a second time. Magnificent.
magnificent goalkeeping from Manuel Neuer to prevent an equaliser. That is an unbelievable save. And I was thinking from the distance, it's going to have to be some hit to beat a goalkeeper of that quality from that far out. And Sabozla gets it up and down over the wall and it is an unbelievable save. But not only the first save, the rebound as well to get up and get his foot to it. Incredible goalkeeping. That's why he's still the German number one. But goalkeepers like Mark andre Ter Stegen amongst the substitutes who must wonder what he's got to do to get a regular start. And it saves like that that's the answer to that question. Germany have won a free kick meantime. And there's a potential penalty check. There's a yellow card just been administered to Antonio Rudiger. And there's a potential penalty check for something that happened in the German penalty area just now in that build-up. So the VAR team are taking a look at that. The crowd don't know that yet. In fact, they're just seeing the yellow card being issued to Rudiger. Check over. And there is nothing to do further about any incidents in the penalty area. But we're just seeing a replay of Neuer with a two-handed save. Couldn't hold on to it. But he was so quick to make sure he closed down the space. As I think it was Shallow tried to send the ball back across the face of goal. Rudiger, meantime, takes the free kick. Josh for Gundogan at the edge of the area. Hit it first time, but it was blocked by Willy Orban just inside the 18-yard line. And Hungary come away with the ball and win a throw-in. 1-0 Germany. Dangerous territory for Hungary now because it's what do you do? To kind of keep doing what you're doing and think, right, we'll get to half-time, hopefully keep it at 1-0. And then second half, we'll go for it. Because you don't want to push too early, too soon. Because now Germany have won 1-up. You know Hungary, they have to win. If they don't win, they're going home. So they have to come out and get a result. That's Darren Bent alongside me, Ian Danta here at the Stuttgart Arena. Germany have the lead. 27 minutes gone on Talk Sport at the Euros. And Hungary have the ball on halfway with Adam Naj. And then Fiola is dispossessed. He fouls his man. That's a free kick to Germany on halfway. Incidentally, Musiala's become the first player to score twice at these championships, all been single goal scorers up till now. 34 different scorers at this tournament, if you exclude own goals, and I'm sure Antonio Rudiger will be delighted I'm excluding own goals. <laughs> He'll be delighted with that. It's an incredible stat, that is. Though. So 2-2 two two for Musiala after 2 in his first 29 for Germany. I do feel a little bit hungry, because when you look at the replay of the goal as well, it could be a foul on, on, on Will Olvan. I know maybe he should be stronger, but still, to push him in the back from there. And Musiala almost had the ball at his feet at the edge of the area. Just couldn't get it under his spell. And the ball's with Milos Kerkes of Hungary. Neat football by the Hungarians to get out to Jalai. And that's a lovely little reverse ball to send Kerkes away. Down the left-hand side, he's ahead of Andric. Two to hit in the area. Finds Soboslai, takes the drive and it's deflected over the bar by Tarr. Brilliant defending from Jonathan Tarr. As Soboslai from about 10 yards smacked it goalwards. He has won a quarter of Hungary. 1-0 Germany. What defending that is, by the way. Because Soboslai probably thinks he scored. It's good quality. He's gone back across the goalkeeper. And Jonathan Tarr has come from nowhere. I've got a block on it. I don't think Sabozla catch it how he'd have liked, but still defended from Jonathan Tart. Incredible. I think that was on target from Shabbos Light. He has the corner down to our left-hand side. Right-footed in swinger. Hits the first defender. Comes out to the edge of the box. Bendigus Bala drives it back in. And it's cleared away again. Only as far as Naj. Drifts out to the right-hand side. And then the ball's taken off his toe by the goal scorer Musiala. And then... He drops his shoulder to try and get away from him, but in doing so, Musiala actually took the ball out of play. So Hungary have a throw. 1-0 the score. We've played nearly half an hour on Talk Sport. And despite being behind, Hungary have had two really good chances to equalise. Yeah, I think they'd Both be happy. Dominic Yeah, they'd be happy to free kick and suppose like that. And even the chance in the first, what, 40 seconds as well? They've had opportunities, to be fair. So if you're a hungry coach, you're thinking to yourself, Do you know, if we stay patient, we stay in this game, more opportunities will present themselves. It's with Fiola on the inside right channel, just over the halfway line for Hungary. Now it's knocked across to Martin Dardai. Kerkes on this near side, faced up by Wirtz. Got help from Shoboslai. He goes back into his own half for Dadai, who plays in Germany for Hertha Berlin. Didn't feature in the qualifiers, only made his competitive debut against Switzerland in the first game. Martin Dadai coming on as a sub, making a full start tonight for his fifth cap. Bulacci the keeper. 
who had his part to play in that German goal. Not able to collect when it, he looked favourite to get both hands on the ball. Ball breaks on halfway. Gundogan swiftly in front of Naj. And now the ball out to the left-hand side. Knocks back for Ilkay Gundogan. Now Crows takes over. And just elects to go back to halfway. And the two centre-halves. First Tar and now Rudiger. Who's got Kimmich calling for it on this near side. Kimmich will give the ball back to the two centre-halves. And again that pattern of patience from Germany on the halfway line. Good ball from Crows to find Musiala. That's a middle step left hand side. He delivers the cross. Kimmich coming in from the back stick. Couldn't get the header. It was cleared away by Kirkes who was on the cover. Back to Rudiger. Inside right channel. Pretty much everything to his left. Now it's sent out to the right wing. And Wirtz who gives it back to Rudiger. Rudiger just stepping in field. I thought he was going to try a shot just for a moment. But he leaves it instead for Josh Kimmich. Rudiger again. Tar calling for it just inside, middle of the Hungarian half. Good ball around the corner looking for Kimmich, but again, last ditch defending from Hungary gets it clear. 1 0 Germany, 31 gone. Every single time Germany play one of those little cute passes in behind, whether it be on the floor, a little chip pass in behind, Hungary don't know what to do with it. They're twos and threes, and that's where the goal comes from. The kind of uncertainty defending that type of little pass, and it causes problems before. So if you're Germany, you look at that, you have to keep trying it, you have to keep trying to exploit that. Andre for Germany. Kurtz lays it off to Rudiger once more. Jonathan Tarr plays it back to Crows. Quickly shifts it left by Mittelstedt out to Musiala. Musiala, left-hand corner of the penalty area. Comes in field, tries to play a 1-2 with Andres. Gundogan chasing after the ball, but it goes behind for a goal kick. It's 1-0 to Germany. You're listening to Euro Game Day Live on TalkSport, presented by Burger King. Bring home the ultimate food satisfaction. Get your favourites delivered now. Scotland, Switzerland, live in Cologne, following this commentary. Hugh Wussencroft will be your host. Joe Shedden and Chris Awellimo, your commentary team. And straight after the game, J Jason Cundy and Jamie O'Hara are back on the sports bar. Get your calls in on 03717-22-33-44 after the full-time whistle. Here's Josh Kimmich for Germany, inside his own half, running past his manager Nagelsmann, gets up to the halfway line and then tucks it in field to Gundogan. Good movement again there from Kai Havertz, just down to Joshua Kimmich, just keep putting it in there, we'll keep getting opportunities, you can't turn away from that, even though because Germany are winning, I wouldn't say they're comfortable. I think Hungary have shown enough of a threat going forward. They've tested Manuel Neuer a few times just to kind of maybe up the tempo, maybe 5%, 10%. Tony Kroos plays a quick ball into Andres who gives it back to Kroos. Then he tries to fire it into the feet of Wirtz who found it too hot to handle. But it's still with the Germans and Jonathan Tarr. Wirtz, oh lovely skill to get away from Dardai. Plays the ball in field looking for Gundogan but it was intercepted by Naj. And now Shalai with another neat turn from him. Gets the ball up to halfway and then there's a foul on Shalai who's looked quite neat and tidy for Hungary in this opening half. Some neat touches and he's won a free kick for his team. 1-0 Germany. Do you know what, he has shown some really nice touches but I'd like to see him show these touches in the opposition half. I mean I know Germany have kept possession so much and they're causing problems but you want to see Shalai, um, you want to see Kirkes, them showing really good touches in the opposition half higher up the pitch because at the minute everything they're doing that's positive is in the edge of their own box. Ronald Shalai, another that plays his club football in Germany, plays with Freiburg, won his 50th cap against the Swiss. Here is Milos Kirkes playing the ball out to the left-hand side. That's Andras Schaefer who guides it back via Kirkes to the keeper Galacci. First on clearance, Varga goes up for a header and wins it ahead of Andrich, but the second ball's picked up by Jonathan Tarr and it's all calmed down and sent back to Neuer. Just over 10 to the break on TalkSport, 1-0 to Germany. Darren Bent alongside me today. Yeah, Varga, he's good in the air, he's shown already this first half that can win his headers, which is why Antonio Rudiger sets it to Andric. Andric, come here, drop back, drop back. I won't challenge him, I'll drop off because he's shown already, there's been a couple of times I've gone up to Vargas and he's had no right to win the ball and he's got his body in, he's made it difficult for them. I mean, if you're hungry and as the game progresses, maybe that's a route forward. Tarr, just moving through the centre circle with the ball at his feet, squares it to his right for Rudiger for Germany. Into the feet of Wirtz, who gives it back to Rudiger on halfway. 
Plays it backwards to square to Jonathan Tarr. That's a progressive pass though to find Musiala inside left channel running towards the edge of the area. Clips it out to the left wing. Mittelstedt, first line cross. Looking for Kimmich again at the far post and it's headed over the bar for a German corner. Once again Mittelstedt looking for Kimmich, his fellow fullback. And Hungary had to head the ball behind us. Another German corner and they lead by goal to nil. What I like about Mikkelstedt is when the ball comes to him, he doesn't have any thought in his mind whatsoever. All I'm going to do is cross the ball. And if you're Kai Havertz or the other the other wide player in Verts, you know it's coming in. Get yourself in there. He's got no other thought process rather than right. I'm going to get my hood up. I'm going to put the ball in the bo box with quality. And he's done that two or three times. And unfortunately no one's got their head on it. Florian Verts is offering a short corner option right along the dead ball line for Tony Kroos. But Kerkes is keeping an eye on that. Meanwhile, the referee has spotted a bit of pushing and shoving inside a packed six-yard area. And is just warning one or two to behave themselves before Crows takes this corner kick. Lots of movement in that six-yard box. In it comes from Crows. Headed out to the edge of the area. Volleyed back towards goal by Mittelstedt. But it was dealt with by Hungary at the back. Slightly... Miscued pass by Musiala, but Neuer helped him out by practically being on the halfway line. And now Wurtz is away, down the German left, up to the left-hand corner of the box, into the feet of Havertz with his back to goal. Lays it all off to Andre. Now Kimmich clips the ball into the area. Wurtz will pick it up again. Lobs it across the face of goal, and it has to be headed behind by Boller for another German corner. They're starting to turn the screw here, the hosts, and they lead 1-0. Yeah, they're keeping the pressure in the box. Every time there's an opportunity, I mean, Manuel Neuer comes out, he feels it back out to Tony Cruz from that, that corner and again they're at the, the Hungarian back line and every single time the ball's in and around the box they're looking to get their head up they're looking to cross it they're looking to feed little passes one or two touches in and around the box Hungary have got to stay compact they've got to stay tight another corner on that far side right footed in swinging from Crows again the six yard box densely populated in it comes from Crows headed out to the edge of the area by Willie Orban the other number six Kimmich down to the right hand side byline chips it beyond the far post Boller gets there first Jonathan Tarr retrieves it and prevents the ball going behind for a goal kick and it's worked in field to Musiala left hand corner of the area tries to get room for a shot lovely quick feet from Jamal Musiala but he can't get past Willie Orban in the end fouls him and that's a free kick to Hungary but lovely feet from the former England under 21 Germany 100 nil on TalkSport lovely feet every single time he gets the ball to his feet Jamal Musiala he's looking to try and make things happen he's gone through two, two three players there as well and he just maybe ran out of steam a little bit and he ran into Wilorban and I think it was a foul but I think from the Hungarian perspective every single time they've crossed the ball into the box they've dealt with it really well I mean every single time you think oh a German head's going to get on it no a Hungarian defender gets a block in or he's hitting there first they've defended the crosses that have come in with quality really well Musiala, the second youngest player in Euros history to score in each of his first two starts in the Euros. And it's a Hungarian player that beats him. Ferenc Bene, who managed two in his first two at Euro 1964. A little bit before Darren Bent was born. It's just a bit. It's <laughs> even a little bit before I was born. <laughs> Andrik for Germany at 1-0. Finds Florian Wirtz inside left channel. Middle step there for support. Inslides Boller and puts it out for a throw. But it's all Germany at the moment. Hungary have not had the ball in the German half for a good six or seven minutes, I would say, Darren Bent. Yeah, I think they would have expected this as well. You'd expect Germany at home to be able to hold on to the ball, dominate possession. But as you're Hungarian, you've got to just stay tight, stay compact. But you've got to stay disciplined. Because the amount of times you think, right, I'm going to go and try and win the ball back myself. I'm going to try and be the hero. That's when the, these Germany players are far too good. They play one and two trucks around you. And they're out of reach. You've got to stay compact. You've got to stay together. Mittelstedt, midway point of the Hungarian half. Down the left-hand side. Plays a 1-2. Tries to get to the byline and measure a crossing. But Boller did well for Hungary. And then a loose touch. Gives the ball back to Mittelstedt. Tries to get a crossing. Guess what? It's a German corner. Came off Boller last of all. Still 1-0 to Germany and we have just over five minutes to the break on TalkSport. Do you know what the problem is, Dan? Is that the Hungarians are working so hard to win the ball back. We've got Varga dropping in to try and help the midfield that when they do eventually win the ball back, there's no outlet, there's no pass. So you're going to have to be a bit brave with your Varga and the manager and say, stay high. We need a target to hit when we, we get possession of the ball. Sixth corner of the half for Germany. Kroos is there again on the far side. Once again, Wurz is just in front of him on the dead ball line if he wants the short corner option. Kirk is watching that. 
Again, loads in the six-yard box. Crow sends it in. Oh, and it's flicked right inadvertently for another corner. Hungarian head went up. It was Barnabas Varga on the six-yard line who looked horrifically towards his own goal, thinking he might have scored an OG. Instead, it's the seventh corner for Germany, 1-0. I mean, he gets up really well, but do you know what it is? It's a little nudge from Jonathan Tarr, I think it is, and that's what puts him off, because he thinks he's about to head it away, and that little bit of pressure from Jonathan Tarr makes him adjust his body position, and that's why it ends up going towards his own goal. So Kroos has come across to this near side now, the German right. This will be an outswinging corner, so the six-yard box is nowhere near as packed as for the last couple of corners that Germany have had. In it comes from Kroos, into the near post. Havertz was there, but it was headed clear. Only as far as Musiala, the goal scorer, who's caught by Salai, but the referee says play on because Wurtz is coming forward. Tries a drive from 25 yards out, out to the right-hand side, and dig went well over the top. Goal kick to Hungary, four minutes of normal time left in this first half, 1-0 Germany, Darren Bent. The wrong option there from Wurtz, I mean he's done well this first half, but he's tried to shoot from an angle that's not on. Oh, and Hungary just give the ball away trying to pass out from the back, but Germany end up going back to the edge of the centre circle to try and set play up with Andrik. Into the feet of Wurtz with his socks rolled down Grealish style towards the ankles. Gundogan, the captain, clips the ball back to Rudiger on halfway. Crows next to him. Getting his head up. Lovely run from Kimmich in the inside right channel, but not used by Crows that time. Instead, he's found Wurtz on the left-hand side. Fires the ball into the feet of Gundogan at the edge of the area. Too hot to handle for Ilkay Gundogan. But Hungary cleared the ball straight to a German shirt. And here is Wirtz again, out to the left wing, maybe another first time cross for Mittelstedt, it is, but nobody at the far post this time, although it drifts outside the area and Musiala keeps possession alive for Germany. Kroos rolling it up to the edge of the box, Hungary desperately getting the foot in to get the ball clear. They're really sitting in, get the feeling they just want to get in at 1-0 at half-time, Darren. Yeah, I can't believe it. Tony Crowe's give the ball away. I can't, honestly, I can't believe it. Yeah, I've watched him this first half, silky, passing, keeping possession. And that one he just tried to fire into Gundogan's feet, he mispassed it. He is human. <laughs> Here he is again, on halfway. Completes that pass well enough. <laughs> into the feet of Gundogan. You've got me thinking now, I'll just give you that for the rest of the game. <laughs> Here is Florian Wirtz teasing the ball out to the left wing and Max Mittelstedt. He honestly is a beautiful thing to watch. Because, and I think he, what I like about it is the respect of his teammates. Every single time someone gets the ball anywhere near him, they have to give him the ball. They have to pass him the ball because he, he just sees pictures that other players don't see. And you, presumably as a striker, would love to make runs and give him the option. Absolutely. I mean, he's not, and that's what I like about him. Some midfielders will care about the stats. He's five yards forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, sidewards. But every single time he gets it, the first thing he's looking for is where can I pass the ball forward? And as an attacking player, that's all he can ask for. Gundogan in possession for Germany. You've got Hungary hemmed in in their own half and have done for the last six or seven minutes here at the Stuttgart Arena. Crows again. Just slides the ball to his immediate right and Rudiger. Little back heel shot from Rudiger infield for Musiala. Crows again takes over. Little touch from Wurz to knock it down for Andrich. They're just playing the ball around the Hungarians at the moment. <laughs> Having some fun out there, the Germans. Now Wurz turns and looks to goal. Finds Musiala! Brilliant! Oh, it's coming to the side netting. I thought that was 2-0. And in my defence, about 30,000 other people thought the same as well. But it, it hit the side netting. And it's merely a corner, because it took a deflection on its way. It's still only 1-0 to Germany. Do you know what? It's Will Orban. I think he gets his toe to it, because... I mean, I'm not even sure it takes a deflection. I think he's got away with that one. I think he's just he's, he's put it wide. But really good play again from Germany. Possession, keeping it really, really compact. Possession was quite slow, but when they needed to speed it up, they did it. They created an opportunity. So it is a corner. Kroos with it, into the near post. It's much better defended this time by Hungary, and it's knocked back by Kimmich, back to his goalkeeper Neuer. And we've got 30 seconds of normal time to go, plus whatever our Dutch referee wants to add on for stoppages. Here's Gundogan finding Andrik in the centre circle. Plays a short pass into Musiala. Crows again receives a pass from a teammate. Plays a 1-2 with Havertz. Now Musiala brings a difficult ball under control well. Inside left channel. Out to the left-hand side. Another first-time cross for Mittelstedt. He's hit about four or five of those. And again, this one's over hit. 
who goes out of play on this near side for a throw as we go into two minutes of minimum stoppage time at the end of this first half on Talk Sport. 1-0 Germany. Mittelstad, he has put in about three or four unbelievable crosses and he's got every right. He's moaning at Gundogan, he's moaning at Havertz and to be fair, Havertz is always in there. But he's moaning at Ferrin Verts. Uh, get in the box. You know, every single time I've got the ball, I put the ball into the box with quality and no one's got the head on it. So I can understand his frustration. But the frustration on the Hungarian bench has led to one of the coaching staff getting a yellow card from the referee. Meantime, Varga comes for the first time we've seen Hungary inside the German half for quite some time. Being held up and actually being fouled by Kimmich, says the referee, tight to this near touchline. So it'll be a free kick to Hungary, midway point of the German half, but just a yard or so in from this near touchline, right in front of Julian Nagelsmann, who once again is prowling his technical area, not looking particularly HP, despite, despite the fact that Germany won the look. Yeah, I think he brought that foul to be fair, and fair play to him, Varga. He's done really well, he's, he's fed off scraps really, but he got his body in, and this allowed Kimmich to drag him down a little bit. I didn't think it was a foul, but he's got it, and at least now, just before half-time, it gives him the opportunity to have an attempt on goal. Germany holding their line at the edge of the 18-yard box. So Bosley swings the free kick in, it's flicked on, and it's in! But the flag goes up to deny the equaliser from Shalai. The initial header from Vargas was brilliantly saved by Neuer. Shalai tucked it home. They will check to make sure it is offside in the VAR tape. But the flag went up immediately from the assistant on that far side. And there do look to be players offside from the initial kick from Shabazz Light. But then again, brilliant goalkeeping from Neuer, who wasn't to know. 1-0 Germany. I think they were all offside from the, the initial free kick from, from Dominic Shabazz Light. And it was an unbelievable cross as well. The quality that he's got to put in the box. And they reacted really well. But again, that's Germany being brave, keeping that high line. So another little warning for Germany. They've had one or two and they've been reliant on the brilliance of their vastly experienced goalkeeper, Manuel Neuer, 38 years young, to keep them in front. And now Wirtz driving towards the edge of the area, tries to find Kai Havertz, who just couldn't take the ball with him. 30 seconds of minimum stoppage time left. 1-0 to Germany, here is Florian Wirtz once more, lays it back to Jonathan Tarr and the referee says that'll do it for a first half of football where Germany are looking for six points from six that will see them through one way or another to the round of 16, even if they only end up with the best third place finish but that looks highly unlikely they've had plenty of chances to extend the one goal lead they've got Hungary made a mess of things at the back midway through the half Gundogan managed to toe poke the ball back to Jamal Musiala six yards out who fired the ball into the roof of the net but Dominic Sobos Light has been the danger man at the other end for Hungary he's had a shot brilliantly blocked on its way to goal by Jonathan Tarr a free kick spectacularly kept out by Manuel Neuer and Neuer again denying a Sobos Light free kick headed towards goal by Vargas right at the end of the half but the flag rightly went up as two Hungarian players were in an offside position but it is still only that one goal advantage that the hosts have at the break Hungary have really got to go for it or their tournament could be over at half time in Stuttgart Germany won Hungary nil thanks Natalie yeah Hungary are out no sign of Germany yet in fact all the Hungarian substitutes have been out warming up in the interval no sign of any German substitutes either they've all been locked in with uh, Julian Nagelsmann no immediate sign of any outfield player changes for Hungary I think that's the 10 players outfield Darren that completed the first half that first half performance that we saw if we're talking about Hungary for a moment that was a better first half than they showed against Switzerland even though they're behind yeah and have to be disciplined we mentioned that word a lot disciplined because they know full well if they don't gone gun ho and opened up this Germany team would have cut them apart but yeah at least they've gone in at half time they're only 1-0 down so the game is still there they can still salvage something from them and they, the positive they have to take in that first half is that they created chances if it wasn't for Manuel Neuer putting off three spectacular saves they score a goal from that so you've got to keep believing and keep trying to make them opportunities count Germany had 20 shots against Scotland on opening night they've had 8 so far 3 on target and when they've won their opening two group stage games at Euros 
They tend to go on and win the whole darn thing, Germany, in 1972 and 80 and Euro 96 at Wembley against the Czech Republic. Having won their opening two group stage games, they ended up lifting the trophy. The only time they failed to do that was at Euro 2012. And the German players, they are on their way. The, the tunnel here at Stuttgart, it, it's huge. It's like a tunnel that goes under the Alps. But they are finally emerging to come out onto the pitch in their chain strip today of the graded pink into dark blue. Hungary in all white with a bit of red and green trim to match their flag. And it would appear that neither manager has made a change at the break. So Hungary will get us underway, kicking from left to right as we look towards their supporters in the Unterturkheimer curve, away to our right. So it'll be Gulazzi in goal, Fiola, Orban and Dardai, three centre-halves, Bola, Naj, Schaefer and Kerkers in midfield, Salai and Soboslai in behind Varga up front. For Germany, who lead by a goal to nil, if you're just tuning into Talk Sport ahead of the second half getting underway, Neuer the keeper, Kimmich, Rudiger, Tarr and Mittelstedt the back four, Andrik and Kroos holding, Musiala, Gundogan and Wurz in behind Havertz, and we are underway and Germany have conceded possession but Hungary can't do anything with it and the ball breaks for Havertz over on the far side of the field hooks it in field for Musiala who's making long strides down the right hand side he's only got Wurtz up with him into the area pulls it back to the edge of the box looking for Havertz but that was intercepted by Naj and Hungary clear their lines Naj again poor touch from him intercepted by Andre and then Crows finds his captain Gundogan Sends it out to the left-hand side for Maximilian Mittelstedt, who had a lot of first-time crosses on the run in that first half. This time he lays it back infield to Wurtz. Gundogan with his back to goal, 25 yards out. Clips it away to the right-hand side and Josh Kimmich. Now Rudiger steps forward, drives the ball goalwards, and it's forced over the crossbar by Willy Orban. Rudiger just strode forward and tried to ladder up it towards goal for the sort of area that where Josimar once scored past Pat, Pat Jennings for Brazil against Northern Ireland at a World Cup. Corner to Germany and they lead 1-0, Darren Dent. I quite like what he did there, Antonio Rudiger. He's put it to an area as if to say to Kaiba, this is where I want you to be, make sure you're in the end of it. And it, was a, it, w it wasn't like a cross, it was almost like a hard slapped pass into an area. It wasn't there, but it was a good play. In swinging corner from Tony Kroos, right under the crossbar, headed out of the goalkeeper's hands by his own centre-half and then there's a push by a German player I think it was Havertz who was the offender and so it's a free kick to Hungary and Havertz is told to back away by the Dutch referee Danny McKayley so that he doesn't get a yellow card for descent so Tart and Andrik have been booked so far for Germany and Varga was booked for descent after that German goal scored midway through the first half by Musiala Gulacci with the free kick for Hungary, the goalkeeper, just shy of his own 18-yard line. Drills it out to the inside right shot, like a, a shove, did it, on Varga. He wanted a foul. Referee saw it and gave nothing. Instead, it's knocked down by Mittelstedt. Then he hooks the ball high into the Stuttgart evening sky. Dada is caught by Havertz. And a free kick to Hungary just by the centre circle. And for... Marco Rossi, who's won 33 of his 65 games as Hungary national team manager, got them to the A League of the Nations League, no mean feat really, he's got a lot to ponder at the moment, but Hungary coming forward now, Soboslai lays it off to midfield for Schaefer, Kirk is making a stride down the left hand side, first touch is awkward but he's won a corner of Kimmich nonetheless in front of those at Hungary fans away to our right hand side 1-0 the score to Germany yeah really good play there from Shalai rolling the ball down for Kirkesh and do you think he overhit the pass if he'd have left it in that space he could have come onto it and hit it first time but he had to take a touch but listen he's done well to get the corner Sobos live with the resulting corner chips it into the near post it's flicked away by Tarr away to this near side the right two players herring after it and it would be allowed to run out of play for a throw in fact it's been given Germany's way because 
Bonner thought it was a hungry throw, let it roll out of play, and then the referee promptly gave the throw to the hosts. I never understand that. Why the referee and the linesman, that they're right there, clearly can keep it in, he would have kept it in if he knew that it was a Germany throw. So, so I always think sometimes you've got to look at the feed of the players. If he's going to let it go out, clearly it's a, it's a Hungarian throw. So Germany have the throw with Mittelstedt, level with his own penalty area on this near side. Looks for Havertz down the line, he couldn't win the header. Ball, pin balls around the inside left channel, given away by Germany. Sobosly trying to get onto the loose ball. Kirkes now joining in, left-hand corner of the box, faced up by Kimmich. Two waiting for a cross. Sobosly is now dropped off and Kirkes intelligently gives the ball back to the Liverpool man. Into the feet of Schaefer, tries to run through a couple of challenges, goes to ground and then he actually catches Andrik and can see to free kick but there are just signs at the start of the second half on talk sport that Hungary have had a bit of flea in their ear from their manager and they're going about their business with a bit more tempo Darren Ben. yeah they are and I like what he's doing there Marco Rossi the manager I, I really like it because he, he's screaming to his players there go forward go and press don't, don't back off now we've got to go and get a goal and he's screaming pointing to his team press go and press in their half I can understand that because they need a goal they need to get back into this game at some point I know you can't be overzealous and start throwing men forward but we've got to cause Germany a problem don't let them have it their own way we played five minutes of the second half on talk sport germany won hungary nil at euro 2024 the other game in this group is live straight after us we'll be off to cologne with hugh wasencroft joe shannon and chris iwellimo scotland against switzerland live and kick by kick with us on talk sport and then jamie and jason will take your calls on the sports bar after all of today's action Kai Havertz, has he won a corner? No, he hasn't. He thought he had. Certainly the supporters behind that goal away to our left and the Kahnstatter curve thought it was a German corner, but not so. There's that run again, though. Kai Havertz is peeling into that kind of left-hand channel uh, over that far side and Antonio Rudiger looking at it and seeing what he's doing. And put a bit, of, a bit too much air on it, but the run was right, the pass was right. It was just the execution of the pass that was wrong. Short goal kick given to goalkeeper Galazzi, plays it out left and it's going to be hit downfield by Schaefer who actually leaves it for Dardai, little fight ball just over the halfway line between Shalai and Rudiger, Rudiger won that and Kroos just calmly turns the ball back to Jonathan Tarr, midway point of his own half, Andrik turns inside his own half of the field and plays it out to the right hand side via Wirtz to Kimi. It goes to Florian Wirtz on halfway. Another player who's had a fantastic season with Leverkusen, Florian Wirtz. Won the Euros under 21s as a German player. And winning his 21st cap, his 20th cap tonight, I should say. Out to the right hand side. Germany have it again. Never with the edge of the area. Wirtz picks up the ball down the right hand side of the box but then gives it back to Kimi. Infield it goes to Rudiger again in that inside right channel clips the crossing headed out by Fiore and Fiore finds Schaefer Schaefer nutmegs his man and will bring the ball up to halfway and release Varga who keeps the ball in play left hand side nicks the ball in field good touch from Salai then Soboslai finds Schaefer again who's got to the edge of the area but Jonathan Tarr gets himself between man and ball and wins it back for Germany 1-0 just run out of space everything up until that last point was really really good but it just maybe one pass too many and then the opportunity was gone Havertz down the right hand side for Germany at the right hand corner of the box infield to Josh Kimmich who is first to shoot you can hear around us just for a moment by those of a German persuasion inside the Stuttgart arena plenty of those out to the right hand side he goes again for Florian Wirtz never with the Hungarian penalty area now he has to go back 15 yards or so for Rudiger Germany switch play from right to the near side to us the left with Germany attacking the Kahnstatter curve away to our left in this second half where the most vociferous Stuttgart home support 
normally resides. This is the problem for Hungary. Man. This is the problem they're going to face. Is that Germany are keeping possession. It's all nice and stuff. They speed it up. When they win the ball back, Hungary, there's no outlet. There's no one up there. So the ball will just keep coming back. Havertz, just inside the area, just loses out for a moment as Willy Orban stepped in front of him. He clears. Now, will this stick for Hungary this time? Down the left-hand side. It's a desperate clearance in the end from Dardai. And nobody up on halfway for Hungary. Soboslai trying to close down Mittelstedt and he calmly rolls it back to his keeper Neuer and Darren Bent shakes his head and that's why you've got to be brave if you're Hungary it looks like Shalai's playing more further forward now than Varga one of them has to stay up there and give them an outlet because Germany are too good you keep giving them opportunities they'll keep trying to create opportunities when you win the ball back Hungary there's got to be a pass on even if you just lean, lend it down the, the, the channel and he challenges and they get a throw on and it takes them up the pitch Florian Wirtz sends it out to Kimmich on the right wing Wirtz gets it back by the right hand corner of the area infield it goes to Tar across the middle step on this near side but he's quite in field level with the edge of the penalty area Rudiger thinks about sending a cross in for the right but leaves it for Kimmich lovely ball slid down the right hand side of the box picked up by Gundogan twists and turns fires the ball into the near post pushed out by the keeper Crows on the follow up with a brilliant save and then he'll actually hold on to the ball when he needed to but Tony Kroos let fly from a good 30 yards out fearsome hit but dealt with by Hungary at the back 1-0 Germany really intelligent Germany. run they've won it back again Germany Musiala flicks it in field to Gundogan across to the edge of the D Wirtz plays it through looking for Havertz and then Havertz clips his man and that's going to be a free kick to Hungary but they look nervous at the back Hungary whenever Germany get in and around the penalty area they look like they've taken lead of their senses. 1-0 to Germany on TalkSport. Nearly 10 minutes gone in the second half. We're at the Euros. We're all over it. Every single game live and kick by kick. England tomorrow against Denmark. Don't forget before that, Slovenia against Serbia on TalkSport 2. Kev Hatchard and Tash Dowie, your commentary team there. Then it's England-Denmark, 5pm in Leipzig with Adrian along with Jim Pratt, Stuart Pearce, Faker Ruthers and the team. The very best coverage of that game. And then we'll bring you Spain against Italy. What game that promises to be in Gelsenkirchen. 8 o'clock on Talk Sport and then all the reps on the phones. Hungary coming forward down the left-hand side of the area. Kirkes ran into Tar and then a poor touch from Schaefer. Just couldn't keep the ball in play. Ten minutes gone in the second half. The score is still 1-0 to Germany. And there may well be changes afoot on the German bench. So the players are getting stripped and ready down beneath us. It may well be. Just looking to see who it is down there. It could be Nicholas Fulkrug who's getting on. Who scored that thunderous effort against Scotland on opening night. Anyway, meantime, Rudiger finding a lovely ball for Kai Havertz down the right-hand side of the area. Tried to pull it back across the face of goal, unselfishly for Gundogan. Intercepted, though, by Dardai. It's going to come back Germany's way. Wirtz this time will knock it back in field for Jonathan Tarr. Tarr up to the edge of the area. Wirtz with a touch across the 18-yard line, but gave it straight to the full-back. And it's sent down the line by Boller, looking for Sobos Light. And across comes Jonathan Tarr. No nonsense challenge from the Leverkusen man, but it is a Hungarian throw. And here comes Nicholas Fulkrug making his way to the touchline. And I'm assuming Nagas will want to make this change before Hungary take the throw on this near side. And indeed, the assistant is about to hold up the board. And the player coming off is going to be Florian Wirtz. So that means Havertz, I assume, Darren Bitt, will drop into a, a, a midfield position. Leroy Sane also coming on as a double change but Wirtz off full crew goal your thoughts on that Darren Bent yeah it makes sense I think Wirtz he's, he's listen, been good but he's kind of been on the edge of the game hasn't really got involved as much as he would have liked certainly like he was against Scotland and I just think he maybe you need a bit more of a vocal point and I think the full crew coming on I mean, we know, Havertz, we know Havertz is coming off and he's the one that's making way for Leroy Sane once of Manchester City so Sane will go into that Left-sided midfield role, Full Krug will go up top. So, it's Nagelsmann that shuffles the pack first. How quickly will Marco Rossi respond after that double change for Germany? Throw in taken by Hungary into the area. Headed clear by Tony Kroos, only as far as Sobers line. Follows it across the face of goal. Inadvertently almost into the path of Shalai, but it's out of play. 
for a German goal kick. You are listening to Euro Game Day live on TalkSport, presented by Carly, the UK's number one lager, 18+. plus. Please drink responsibly. Ian Danter and Darren Bent, former England striker, with you on TalkSport at the Stuttgart Arena. We're approaching the hour mark, and the score is the same as it was from the 22nd minute onwards when Jamal Musiala fired Germany into a one-goal lead. It's a bit different type of problem with Sane on that side because one thing we know that he can do is run that kind of pace. And with Nicholas Fulker as well, more physical presence maybe than Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz, was, he's in, I thought his movement was really good. They weren't just giving him the service. But with Nicholas Fulker right now, get his body in. It'll be hard, big target man. And obviously we know he can score a goal. Musiala looks to fire the ball into the area, take a deflection off Adam Nash and actually made the claim easier for the goalkeeper, Galazzi. And he will roll the ball out just to his left-hand side for Dardai. And the centre-half hits a long, raking ball downfield. Lovely first touch from Roland Salai down the left-hand side. Brought it down like he had carpet slippers on. Cross to Vargas! Heads over the bar! Big chance for a Hungarian equaliser. And Vargas, who scored against Switzerland, couldn't oblige. Cross was on a plate for him, but he headed it over. 1-0 Germany. Incredible, but he gets up maybe a fraction too early and does everything right. Other than hit the target and score, the ball comes in from that left-hand side. He directs it back where it comes from he gets up Antonio Rudigan get nowhere near it Jonathan Tars caught him out in possession and it's a really good header but it maybe it's a, a fraction too high he tries to put it back where it comes from and just gets too much on it another moment for Hungary at these championships but they can't convert and they stay a goal down Here's Rudiger for Germany, just over the halfway line to the right of the centre circle. Flicks it out for Kimmich to his immediate right. Kimmich comes forward for about 10 yards, chips the ball into the area, but it's over the head of full Krug and bounces once and through to the Hungarian goalkeeper, Golacci. Still waiting for Hungary to make changes. There are lots of substitutes for Hungary down the right-hand side from us. who are all looking at the bench as if to say, is he going to pick me, is he going to pick me, is he going to pick me? Balls out of play meantime for a Hungarian throw on this near side. Do you ever do you deliberately try and catch the eye if you're on the bench? I know it wasn't very often, Darren Bent. But oh, when you was more bench. than you think. <laughs> <laughs> but are you trying to catch the eye of the manager and doing all that sort of hello, waving at him. Yeah, well also you almost just want to let him know that you're ready. I mean I never understood the guys that just sat on the bench all in the second half and then when they say go and warm up and go and warm up. But those guys there that are out there, they're showing the manager, listen. I'm ready to go. If you make the substitution now, I am, I've been doing my sprints, I've been doing my stretches, I am ready to go. There's still no changes made as yet by Hungary. Germany, 1-0 up, and coming forward down the left-hand side with Jamal Musiala, the goal scorer. Hits the ball against Naj, half-hearted, claims for a penalty, waved away almost sarcastically by the referee. And Germany have it again, right-hand side with Josh Kimmich, who made his debut for Germany just before... Euro 2016 and ended up taking a penalty in a shootout against Italy. He was trusted that much, that quickly as a German international. Musiala making room for a shot from 25 yards out but couldn't wrap his right foot round it enough and it went well wide in the end for Hungarian goal kick. 1-0 Germany on TalkSport. Yeah, really good play from Jamal Musiala getting into that pocket of space in between the box and, and the, the last line of um, midfield for, for the Hungarian team. But he gets it and he just shifts his body. You know exactly what he's going to do. He's one of those players where he wants to shift to that right to get the shot off and you know he's going to do it and do everything you can to stop him but you can't. His quality is just that much. A little body swerve, little body shake and his pasture. Hungary had the ball in their own defensive third but Schaefer forced to give the ball back to his goalkeeper. Now Willie Orban gives the ball back out to Schaefer on the left hand side. Infield it goes to Milos Kerkes. Germany with a good press here Closing down the space, Hungary finding it difficult to play around them. 62 minutes gone at the Stuttgart Arena here in southern Germany. 1-0 to Germany and they just conceded a free kick pushed by Jonathan Tarr on Vargas, who's just had that terrific chance to draw Hungary level. The set piece is taken too quickly for the referee's liking by Dominic Sobozlai. Maybe the ball was moving. But still the substitutes wait for the call from their Hungarian manager. Although there may well be one change in a minute. Looks like Kleinheisler is coming on shortly. As Kerkes makes a run down the left-hand side. Cross deep, deep to the far post. Boller forces the corner off Mittelstedt. There's good pressing from the full-back. Boller... 
And Max Mittelstedt was forced to turn it behind for what is Hungary's fourth corner of the game. They trail 1-0. Yeah, they're starting to run in behind and cause the Germany backline problems. And I think that's what you're going to have to do. I don't think everything can be to feet. It can't be intricate all the time. At times, you've got to get the ball out of your feet and just roll it in behind. And that's where I think certainly the second half, the Hungarians are getting more, more opportunities on goal. So, Laszlo Kleinheisler is coming on before this corner. Plays for Hadjuk Split. And he's coming on for Adam Nash, straight swap in central midfield. The number 15 comes on for the number 8. And he stands at the edge of the D as Sobos Live prepares this latest corner in front of the Hungarian fans away to our right. But it, before he takes the kick, the referee again has got his eye on some shenanigans going on around the six-yard line. And, and Antonio Rudik is at the heart of it, <laughs> as usual. In it comes from Sobos Live, deep to the far post, almost dropped for Vargas. Left-hand corner of the area, Kirkes picks it up. Trying to drive at Tony Kroos, but Kroos was too wily, too clever, too experienced. And Kirkes ended up running out of room. Goal kick Germany, and they lead 1-0 on TalkSport. Yeah, I mean, the Hungarians have got a few opportunities. We spoke, said about it, they needed to mix it up. They were defending too deep. There was no outlet. But it just looks like to me that Marco Rossi said, you know what, we'll leave you three up. Because now there's three bodies up there. They can go a bit a little bit more direct. When they're trying the one and two touch passes, the little five-yard passes, they're not really getting anywhere. At times, you've got to mix it up. Kroos, it's a long ball downfield looking for Leroy Sane. A little over hit from Tony Crows, but the idea was right. A little diagonal from in to out, and then running that inside right channel from Sane. Wasn't found. Ball cleared downfield for Hungary by Dardai. Might drop for Vargas here. Knocks it out to Roland Shalai, but he can't keep it in play on the far side of the field. And it will be a throw to Germany. The, the boss, Marco Rossi, is telling his Hungarian players to hem Germany in. The yeah. throw is almost at the midway point of their own half right-hand side. He's trying to tell them to keep Germany hemmed in in their defensive third. You have to. You've got to squeeze in. If you let, if you let the likes of Tony Cruz get on the ball, he'll make things happen. He'll pick it little pockets of space. And his, his range of passing is that good. But if you don't squeeze up, he'll just turn and he'll just pick passes all day. At some point, you've got to disrupt that. Rudiger. Striding forward with the ball at his feet. Plays a square pass to Jonathan Tarr for Germany. Just shown in the centre circle. 25 minutes to go on Talk Sport. Germany, the hosts, looking to go two wins from two at the tournament they're hosting. And they'll be through to the round of 16, at least as a best place third team with the win that they're getting here. They'll be confirmed in the top two if they win, and Scotland do not beat Switzerland later, live on Talk Sport straight after this game. We'll be over to Cologne, Hugh Rosencroft, Joe Shen and Chris Iwellemo, your commentary team. Sane down the right-hand side of the box, lobs it across the face of goal. It's over here for full crew, but Musiala can keep it in play on this near side and find Mittelstedt. Mittelstedt knocks it down for Tony Crows. Crows gives it back to Mittelstedt, left-hand side. Good ball into the area, headed up in the air by Fiola. It's only half cleared. Crows has it back, finds Musiala again, head to the area, good ball out to the left wing, Mittelstadt, first time cross, Gundogan drives it home, a captain's goal from Ilkay Gundogan, and Germany are surely going through after just two games of this tournament. Mittelstedt's had so much space down the left-hand side and he's taking a lot of the congratulation from the substitutes down to the left-hand corner flag. But it's the skipper who drilled it home expertly. Ilkay Gundogan makes it Germany 2, Hungary 0. Really, really good goal and really intelligent play from Gundogan. And with Mittelstedt, he's been getting crosses in the box all day long and he's crossed up in good quality. But this one, he just decides to mix it up. Rather than just fire it into an area, he just cuts it back slightly towards the penalty box. Everyone thinks he's going to fire it in again he just cuts it back and when Gunduan he's in there he just drifts he doesn't sprint in there he kind of just hovers himself in there no one picks him up and he just sweeps it in with his left foot really really good goal because as I said Mistelstad he's been putting crosses in all day and no one's been getting an end of it and that very last one he goes I'm not going to cross it as I have been to that back post I'm just going to cut it back into an area where Ilka Gunduan just kind of goes in there and he sweeps it in with his left foot really really nice finish Really animated celebration from Julian Nagelsmann as well as that one hit the back of the net. And so Hungary have so much work to do now. 2-0 down with a quarter of the game to go. But here is Boller with a cross from the dead ball line. But it only hits a German defender at the near post. And the host clear. Full crew tries to turn away from Orban on halfway but gets it wrong. But Gundogan 
scoring his 19th international goal, winning his 79th cap tonight, has put Germany away in clear, but here's Shabozlai for Hungary, whose Euros could be coming to a very, very short and premature end here. Schaefer, edge of the area, right-hand corner of the box, but he, there were three German players around him, one of them was Tony Kroos, and he took the ball off him. Tarr, inside his own penalty area, being hassled and hurried by Kleinheisler, but Rudiger will send it long downfield, and Sane picks it up. Now, what a danger for Hungary to have somebody as quicksilver as Leroy Sane if you're pushing on and trying to force the issue to get a goal back. That could be the problem. The more Hungarians put, push, push forward and try and commit more, more men forward, Germany should be there waiting with the likes of Sane and Musiala and Fulcro. There's going to be a few of them waiting now. Well, here's Kimmich to drive it in oh, across the face of goal and wide. He didn't score many, Josh Kimmich. Nearly got one there. Just poofed it across the face of goal and it went wide for a Hungarian goal kick. And there's going to be another change. And a, a player who plies his trade here, Chris Furyk, off Stuttgart, is going to be on shortly to win just his fifth cap at the next break in play and uh, Emre Chan who came on late against Scotland and scored he's coming on as well so another double change in the offing for Germany who lead 2-0 with just over 20 minutes to play on TalkSport Ian Danter and Darren Bent with you live at the Stuttgart Arena and Germany looking very much the form side the lack of competitive football does not appear to have caused them a problem Darren Bent in the run up to these championships and now their pass has been slick it's been precise they've mixed it up they've gone long they've gone short and of course Hungary a real problem I mean that goal there was fantastic I mean no if you're Kleinheiser just come on Unfortunately, I think you're to blame because Ilkay Gundogan's connected to him. He doesn't track the runner and Ilkay just kind of goes off him. He leaves him and he's probably thinking, I hope the ball doesn't come to him. It does. Really good play from Germany. And as I said, Ilkay Gundogan just sweeps it in with his left foot. It's a really good finish. Sane for Germany. Looks for Jamal Musiala. Midway point of the Hungary half. He's shoved in the back by Shabozlai. Clear push right in front of the referee. Easy decision for the Dutch referee to give Germany a free kick. About 35 yards out. They lead 2-0, and here comes the double change for Germany. And Emre Chan is coming on to replace Andrik, who was on a yellow card coming into this game. Good solid performance again, Darren, from Robert Andrik. as the sort of protector in front of that back four. Yeah, he is. Really good performance from him. But again, you can quite clearly see from up here, Tony Cruz has almost talking to him, kind of guiding him through it. But he's been really good today as well. Effective. And the very effective Jamal Musiala is the other player that's being withdrawn. The only player of these championships to have scored twice. And he could have had more as well because he's, had, he's got himself into great positions. And I mean, it must be a joy. When you play with someone like Tony Cruz, Jamal Musiala must have thinking thank you because every time they give him the ball he's free, he's on the half turn he's getting at defences he's been really impressive now and he deserves the round of applause that he's getting for coming off yeah Furyk delighted to be on his home turf representing his country winning what is just his fifth cap <laughs> the crowd singing his name at full volume as it's announced over the PA system 19 minutes to go. You're listening to Euro Game Day live on TalkSport, presented by Burger King. Bring home the ultimate food satisfaction. Get your favourites delivered now. Germany 2, Hungary 0. Remember, Scotland up against Switzerland straight after this commentary. We'll be off to Cologne with Hugh Wissencroft, Joe Shannon and Chris Iwellamo for full live commentary of that game. But there is a double change being readied by Hungary. And Martin Adam is going to be on. It's one of those changes. And the other player coming on is Jolt Naj. So one Naj has gone off. Another one's coming on. And he plays for the Pushkas club. He's played in Hungary his whole career, Jolt Naj. And Adam, big stocky forward, is going to be coming on as well. Big unit. But Hungary are running out of time here to force the issue, 18 minutes left in Germany, firmly in control in Stuttgart, 2 nil up, here is Furyk, getting his first involvement, plays the point to the feet of the other sub-full crew, he lost out, but there's 
the ever-reliable Tony Crows to mop things up and Germany send the ball out to the right hand side and Kimi Sane in support hugging the touchline level with the edge of the area being watched by Kerkes and Germany conversely don't need to force the issue at this point they can just play the ball around and wait for a moment where they can strike Crows floats the ball out to Sane right wing Faced up by Shalai, looks to run at Roland Shalai, into the box, into the feet of Kimmich, turns, fires left footed, good save by the keeper, and Fulkrug knew he couldn't touch the rebound because he was offside, and instead it's sent downfield for Vargas to chase, but there's Jonathan Tarr winning that race between the two and looking every bit the thoroughbred as he did so. Germany 2, Hungary nil. Yeah, I mean, it's been hard for him all day, uh, Vargas. He's all he does, he tried to feed off scraps, he tried to run in behind, he tried to hold the ball, but unfortunately they just can't get enough bodies around him. I mean, that was a, a classic situation. He was the only pass on, but Jonathan Tired, 5, 10 yards on him, he was never going to get that pass in behind. As Darren Bent, former England striker, alongside me, Ian Tanter here in Stuttgart. Gundogan's making another lovely run through the middle, but he's not spotted really reveling in this more attacking midfield role that he's got since Crozes return kind of like the role he was playing for Manchester City when he was there here's Sane 25 yards out gets the ball on his right good shot good save pushed around the post for a corner by Gulacci little daisy cutter from Leroy Sane getting the ball onto his right foot well dealt with but it's a German corner and they lead 2-0 that's a really good save because that's through the bodies as well it goes through defenders legs and he has to react really really uh, late Galacci and he does that and he tips around the post it's a better save than it looked initially so the double change is now being made Kirkes is the first player who's making his way to the near touch line to be replaced so the Bournemouth man comes off and that will allow Uh, the player Zoltan Naj to come on to replace him and Adam is on for Bola for the other change for Hungary who have a corner to defend here Tony Cruz just uh, adjusting his laces whilst he's sorting that out and in it comes from Crows flapped away by Galacci over to the far side Gundogan will keep it in play over on the far side of the field he's got support from Sane in the right wing Schaefer watching his every move Gundogan again calmly rolls it back infield to Mittelstedt he thought about the reverse ball coming across to his more natural side of the field and then he's fouled free kick Given yep. the weight of Germany, and it's in a dangerous position here, Darren Bent, with 30 yards out, pretty much dead central, 2-0 Germany. Yeah, I thought it was a foul. Um, he, he gets into a really good position there, Nordstad, and I think he's just about to play the ball, and listen, it's, it is a foul, Martin Adam, he just gets his body in there, and just stops him from maybe putting the trigger, or getting that pass off as well, so for me, it's a foul. So, a free kick, Tony Crows. I remember him scoring a last-ditch goal from a free kick against Sweden in the World Cup in Russia back in 2018 to rescue Germany's World Cup chances that night in Sochi. He's one of the players standing over it. Leroy Sane is there too. Rudiger having plenty to say about what should be done. There's a two-man German wall standing in front of the Hungarian wall, which is inside the D. Sane is going to go for goal, and that is... Not much better than I would have done. <laughs> Mind you, I, I might not have reached the byline with, 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 with a, a shot from that far out, but it was well over the bar. 2-0 Germany. Well, the only way he was going to beat a goalkeeper from that range, it had to be power, but he gets the technique all wrong. And we've seen Sane hit those free kicks, but he almost hits through the valve and it, will, it wobbles a little bit. But from that type of range there, I mean, it has to be a, a spectacular hit to beat a goalkeeper. He's been, I think he's been very well. He's, he's done well today. He made some really good saves. To beat a goalkeeper of that quality today, he's going to have to be an absolute perler. 77 minutes gone in Stuttgart on Talk Sport with Scotland, Switzerland to come. Stay on this frequency and we'll take you to Cologne straight after this game. And we'll see how the Scots can recover from the mauling they received at the hands of the Germans on the opening night. And England are back in action tomorrow. All the build-up tomorrow afternoon from 1pm. Hawksby and Baker at Box Park, Wembley. The likes of David Seaman, Ledley King and Steve Bruce, who famously never won a cap for his country, will be joining Paul and Charlie at Box Park. And then all the build-up. Adrian Durham, your host 
from 4pm with Jim Pramford, Stuart Pearce and Faye Carruthers in Leipzig as England play Denmark. Here come Germany with Gundogan who scored their second. Runs into trouble at the edge of the area. But will you or Bank can only get it half clear. One back brilliantly by Kimmich. And he finds Leroy Sane, a little foot in from Dardai, only gets it half clear. Back with Josh Kimmich on the right-hand side. Chan takes over, works it back for Rudiger. Now Tarr, just ahead of the centre circle. Furik turns it round the corner first time, gets it back from full crew. Good ball from Furik, out to Kimmich on the right-hand side. Sane in support, lovely move this from Germany, lots of completed passes. Kimmich looking for a cross, but elects to go back once again to Antonio Rudiger. Tarr just ahead of the centre circle. Finds Tony Crows. He floats the ball out to Sane. Cushions a header down to Kimmich on the right wing. Full crew calling for a cross, but it's played in short to Gundogan. 30 yards out. Rolled back into the centre of the half for Tarr. Then Full crew tries to play a 1-2 at the edge of the area. Doesn't quite come off for him. And they can't get it clear, but there is a foul and a push by Full crew on Orban. Or was it uh, Fiola? It was Fiola that was fouled. And that long sequence of German passing ends with a Hungarian free kick. 2-0 to Germany, 79 minutes gone on talk sport. Yeah, it's difficult for the Hungarians now because they're 2-0 down. Germany are comfortable possession. They can't get enough men forward. What they're going to have to need, they're going to need Martin Adam to kind of hold the ball. He's gone up there alongside Varga, which I think is probably the right thing to do. They probably should have done it a little bit earlier, changed the shape to like a 4-4-2, and just try and get more bodies forward because that's been the problem for them, Hungary, this second half, is that they've had possession, they've looked up, and there's no one to pass to. But it's giving it back to Germany. And listen, you give you give this Germany team more and more opportunity to create chances with the players they've got eventually they're going to do it we've just seen the cameras pan on to uh, Yogi Love the former German manager who sat here in the stands at the Stuttgart arena looking on at players he used to manage Neuer and Kroos of course and Gundogan but this latest incarnation of Germany looks like they pose a threat to everybody else at these Euros. Emre Chan driving forward, finds Furik, left-hand side for Germany, getting into the area, players backpedalling, Furik, oh, tried to wrap his foot round it and go for goal, and it hit it well, well wide. Fancy the goal on home turf this field but it wasn't to be Go I, kick. I get that he's back home he got, an, he got a fantastic ovation when he walked onto the pitch the home fans here probably want to see him score as well the, but 10 minutes to go the team's 2-0 up why not have a go why not don't get, don't get me wrong though if I was a centre forward in the box and he's shooting from I'm there I'm say, screaming at him saying, oh, yeah, hey, cross yeah, it yeah you'd be applauding and going yeah yeah fair play <laughs> no job. of course you wouldn't <laughs> Talk Sport Breakfast back in the morning with uh, Alan Brazil and Gabby Agbonlahor. Stuart Pearce will join them as well for an hour around 8.30 to preview England's game against Denmark in Leipzig tomorrow night. And Ali McCoist will join Alan and Gabby to pick the bones out of what happens tonight in Cologne between Scotland and Switzerland. That's live on Talk Sports straight after this. We'll be off to Hugh Wisencroft at the end of this game. Meantime, 2 0 to Germany. Nine minutes to go on Talk Sport. And Tony Crowes calmly sweeps the ball out to Josh Kimmick in his own defensive third. Back it goes to Neuer, who's had far less to do in this second half, Darren Bent, than he did in the first. And that's something of a surprise to me. It is, but they just didn't, they haven't just capitalised on that. They ended the first half really well, Hungary. Created chances, Neuer made those two great saves. But Hungary just haven't got enough men forward. And when they've got to the, other than that, the header from Varga, which he should score, they haven't created too many opportunities in the second half. Well, we're going to see Dennis Undav, who's been playing here at Stuttgart on loan from Brighton this season, coming on in a moment. But meantime, Hungary have won a corner. There's still time for Hungary to do something here, but they've really got to get themselves back within a goal now. And they've got a corner. They scored a lot of goals from set pieces in qualifying, seven in all. And they have a corner in front of their own fans away to the far right-hand side that Sobosla is going to take. Right-footed in swinger. And it goes right under the crossbar and headed over the top for Emre Chan for another corner on this near side the right. And Chan just got in ahead of Adam to get it away from danger. But they've done really, they it really, really well because Sabozlai, every single one of his set plays, whether it be free kicks or corners, he puts it in with some real quality. 
54,000 inside the Stuttgart Arena looking on as Soberslai sends a short corner into Salai and then the ball set into the box and the giant figure of Antonio Rudiger got it clear Sane is clipped as we try to bring it clear and it's a free kick this will herald the arrival of Dennis Undav 18 goals the top scoring German in the Bundesliga this season Dennis Undav he managed to get a few goals at Brighton last season but he's by no means a regular and it's the captain Ilkay Gundogan who is going off and he gets a huge ovation Ilkay Gundogan 33 years young now at Barcelona really came to prominence in his days at Borussia Dortmund before he's moved to Manchester City and he comes off to allow Undav to come on for Germany's final change yeah I mean he's been good at Ilkay Gundogan really good goal he's got as well really intelligent we saw him do it so many times for Manchester City just kind of goes into the box but when he goes in there he's one of those midfield players he doesn't slash at anything it's always a calm controlled finish and it's a really good goal and he's played really well today 2-0 to Germany six minutes of normal time to go on talk sport out to the right hand side and Kimmich who now has the captain's armband with Gundogan having left the field and had high fives with every single member of the coaching staff tea lady and everybody <laughs> sat down beneath us before he takes his place well, that's captain's role isn't it <laughs> Jonathan Tart of Leverkusen flips the ball in field for Tony Kroos Chan finds Furik on this left hand side Mittelstedt's gone ahead of him into the area pulls it across the face of goal and there should have been somebody there really in a German shirt to tuck it away but Hungary managed to smuggle the ball out of their own 18 yard box but again Maximilian Mittelstedt the man that was provide, trying to provide the assist there Darren Penn do you know what and if, if Gundogan's still on the pitch he probably still scores that because Mittelstedt he doesn't smash it across he just almost dinks it into an area and it drops right on the penalty spot and we know that's what Ilkar Gundogan would be it, stop, it stops there and no one's there to put it in the back of the net tell you what he only made his debut in March for Germany Maximilian Mittelstedt but he looks at home he was relegated last summer at Hertha Berlin came here to Stuttgart and had one hell of a season don't forget Stuttgart finished second in the Bundesliga only the invincibles of Bayer Leverkusen went above them it's going to be another double change for Hungary in just a moment but it appears to be a lost cause for Marco Rossi and co they had a hideous group stage of the Euros last time out you might remember France, Germany and Portugal in their group here's Furyk making a lovely run for Germany into the left hand corner of the box keeps it away from Soboslai floats it across to Kimmich just outside the D Kimmich sets himself for a shot and then fires into the right hand side for Sane can't get the cross in but Kimmich does finds full crew who was falling backwards as he tried to apply a finish and it goes behind and the changes are being made by Hungary right now and uh, Daniel Gazdag of uh, Philadelphia in MLS he's coming on and so too is Kevin Soboth who plays for the Uspest club uh, years of being a player at Benfica and never get a look in Barnabas Varga who scored against Switzerland is one of those players withdrawn had a massive chance didn't he Darren Bent second half to get Hungary level at 1-1 with that header yeah I mean he, he did everything right but score and hit the target I mean his movement was good he peeled onto the back of Jonathan Tarr who couldn't, who couldn't react and I think he maybe just got up a fraction too early because he tries to guide it back where he come from which is the right thing to do in that situation but he just gets too much on it and it drops just over the crossbar so Gajdag and Shoboth are on Varga and Salai have gone off but time running out three minutes of normal time to go on talks court Hungary have the ball with their goalkeeper Galachi Soboslai hits the ball against Furyk and wins a throw in in this right back position don't forget Hungary play Scotland in the final game 
and Scotland will be desperate to get something because they'll know Darren Bent going into the final game if they've got something on the board tonight against Switzerland they've got something to play for for a third place potential finish I, exactly so you, you'd like to think that they will get the job done tonight it's going to be difficult for them though because Switzerland are Sane time. into the area right hand side the shot is deflected and goes the wrong side of the post for Leroy Sane but it is a corner late on for the Germans with two minutes to go 2-0 yeah good play again from Sane but when he went past the defender I'm thinking right can you shift it he doesn't really do anything he's faced up with the defender uh, Will Orban and he, he doesn't really shift if he shifts it to his left then he can open up the angle but he almost does nothing and tries to hit it between the defender's legs but even if it goes through the goalkeeper probably saves it so disappointed from, from Leroy Sane in that situation there Close takes the corner and takes it out to outside the area gets it back from Furik Sane drifting down the left hand side of the area being watched all the way good defending from Hungary now Soboslai tight to this near touch line tries to bring it clear good ball up to halfway and Sobos his first touch he's caught by middle step but the referee says play on because Hungary still have possession now he's bringing play back and he's going to book middle step for that foul on the substitute Sobos 2-0 Germany yeah tactical foul there I think he almost had to because he was breaking away just leave your foot there dangle your leg there just catch him a little bit break up momentum it's one of those you have to take for the team unfortunately going to be three minutes of additional time minimum when we get there but there's still a minute of normal time to play here at the Stuttgart Arena on Talk Sport as Savoslai floats the ball into the area Adam goes up with Neuer he's lost it and the ball's tucked towards goal but kept out on the goal line and then a Hungarian player goes down no penalty I think it was Josh Kimmich that kept the ball out as Hungary thought they either got a goal back or won a penalty. Instead, Soboslai gives the ball away to Sane, who's charging over the halfway line. Full crew to his right, Chan to his left, and he can't find either of them. Four from Leroy Sane there. The option there was full crew. That's where he should have passed, should have been. He tries an outside of the boot for a pass that wasn't really on, and the opportunity gone. If you're sitting the forward there, you pulled off into a really good channel. Full crew, just passing the ball. He gets one touch, he gets a shot off. But Sane, for me there, chose the wrong option. So instead... Hungary get the ball down the other end but Germany have themselves a ball down the right hand side for Josh Kimmich plays it back to Chan on halfway that last sequence there Martin Adams could absolutely smash from Manuel Neuer wow yeah he's a big unit is Martin Adams <laughs> he is so the three minutes of minimum stoppage time has begun and the Hungarian fans trying their best away to our right hand side to encourage their players but this Euros like the last Euros it's just a group that's so so tough and they've had two tough games because you should never discount the Swiss they're in, still in the top 20 of the world ranking mm. Switzerland very tough nut to crack Hungary win the ball back at the edge of their own penalty area. It's also what if hung Hungary have created so many chances today where they just think a little bit extra quality in that final third and no manual noise made some unbelievable saves but you're looking back you're thinking you, when you analyse the footage later on and you're sitting in the team hotel it's almost like well how have we not scored today because they've created enough opportunities to have got themselves a goal in this game. Well I think it's flip-flop they were poor first half against Switzerland better second half I think it's vice versa today yeah. better in the first half despite going behind and Neuer's had much less to do since the restart. Ball's out of play for a German throw on this near side. Nagelsmann is going to give the ball to his left back, Mittelstedt. Just over the halfway line for Germany, who are going to take their time, as you would expect. They don't have to use up too much energy in these closing stages. A minute and a half of the minimum three has gone. Germany to Hungary nil. Off to Cologne shortly with Hugh Wisencroft, Joe Shannon and Chris Iwellemo, former Scotland international. How will the Tartan army respond to that defeat to Germany? Switzerland to their opponents. We'll bring you the team news from Cologne and the full game live and then Jason Cundy and Jamie O'Hara will take your calls on the sports bar at the conclusion of that game. So stick with Talk Sport and we will continue to bring you the very best commentaries from Euro 2024. It was overhit by Undav as he tried to thread it through the eye of a needle for Fulkrug who appreciates the intention of the pass but it went straight through to Galaxy. And now Dardai. Hungary going to have to lick their wounds here and hope they can get three points in the final game and see what that means for them whether that gives them any sort of a chance of 
a best third place finish but it would appear unlikely but to be fair to them they've, they've shown opportunities today that they can play you said first half they were good second half today maybe not so much but if you look at the performances I think you were playing against Germany or one of the favourites for the competition and we've caused them problems it's just that last little bit of quality in the final third maybe we've lacked today so I think you've got to take the positives on this game you've been beaten by the better side that happens little step was booked a little while ago for a foul on Soboth well Soboth has just turned the tables he's just got a yellow card for a foul on the German left back and at the end of it all Germany will have a free kick midway point of their own half taken short to Crows by Tarr and the referee blows for full time and Germany have won their opening two Euro 2024 matches they will be through to the round of 16 no matter what after another strong performance in front of their own fans here at the Stuttgart Arena. Hungary had chances in the first half, didn't take them. Jamal Musiala took his midway through that first period to put Germany in front. And then the skipper, Ilkay Gundogan, scoring his first German goal from open play. That was midway through the second half to seal the deal. Hungary have no points from their opening two games and their Euros looks threatened. But the hosts march on, just the second team in history to score seven goals in their first two games of a Euro campaign like the Netherlands did at Euro 2008. But they've got six points on the board and that's what really matters. Germany through to the knockout stages. It's finished here at the Stuttgart Arena. Germany two, Hungary nil.